Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob ENT Podcast, the best sports podcast in New Jersey. This is episode 325. On this episode, we have our new segment, Two Minute Drill, where we touch on some storylines, big headlines going through sports. Doesn't matter what sport it is, to get through it in two minutes with each subject. We also talked about the NFC East preview, who wins the division. Who's the best quarterback in the division? What's the Cowboys going to do with their signs that they need to happen? Malik neighbors, all of it. We touched on all of it. And we touched on some college football preview, looking at that. And we ended off the show with our hottest takes. Doesn't matter the sport. Our new segment called Turn Up the Heat, the hottest takes that we have. It could be sports, food, whatever. It could be anything, honestly. But y'all know the vibes. If you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Make sure that you. Share, subscribe, like, tell this to any and everybody, your grandmother, your baby moms, even if you don't talk. Bench Mob ENT Podcast. We appreciate it. Thank y'all for all the support. Sit down, get ready, tune in. If you're watching or you're listening, it's another great episode, episode 325. Well, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Bench Mob ENT Podcast. As y'all already heard in the intro, you know what's going to be on this episode, so I'm not going to repeat it. But we have back with us our first episode since I had a child. Our first sports episode. Excited to be back. Greg, Mr. Hot Takes, Debate Your Mother, Sends Mayor, Ma, Smooth Operator, Davenport. Fellas, how y'all doing? Been better. <clears throat> no, the hot Doritos are crazy, bro. What? Well, what are they putting that? This is his first show. <laughs> what you mean? Eating hot Doritos before we about to shoot. I didn't know it was going to be that bad, bro. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Ooh. Hey, you already know I'm your host, moderator, Tone, Mr. Still Not Worried. We got a new segment starting off this episode, Two Minute Drill. We're going to run through a couple of subjects. Two minutes on each topic. Once that's done, subject is done. So a little rapid fire, some topics that's not going to actually be on the regular docket, but is worth actually having some input on it. First one, a part of the two-minute drill, Lori Marketing got the five-year, $238 million extension. He cannot be traded till February 6th with this extension. Will Lori finish off this contract with the Utah Jazz? Mm. That's why he locked in that max deal. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the most money he could get was from the team that he was currently with. So it's kind of similar to what Donovan Mitchell did, um, where you lock in that money and then, you know, once you realize that you can't win or, you know, you you spend a little bit of money, you're like, okay, I don't really want to be here anymore. Utah, Cleveland, kind of the same place. Um, Then you request out. I mean – Nobody was going to offer what Utah wanted, and Danny Ainge was, I think he's the hardest GM to negotiate with. Oh. And can you blame him? I mean, his track record with what he's done in Boston, I mean, I'd be arrogant too. I'd be selling off to the highest bidder, and if you don't meet my demands, then I'm not trading them. So it's like it's hard to trade with that guy. But Lori – Finding that deal, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, compared to his last deal where I think this year he's making like $18 million for the year, which is like he'll make that in the first two months next year. So uh, he came up, to say the least. Yeah, they're one of those in between. And to Miles' point, they're one of those in-between teams. So, you know, you're not going to win a championship with that guy on your roster. You're not going to flip this thing around in, in the span of that contract. It's going to be hard to make ja- the Jazz into a contender unless they hit a generational prospect, right? Maybe that changes their plans in one of these upcoming drafts, like a next next year's draft. But you won't be bad enough to go get a bad player anyway. So, um, yeah, I, I just feel like, you know, to Miles' point, he won't be there. You won't see the length of that contract through – in Utah. He'll be out of there. Especially with Trader Joe as a GM. Next one, Simone Biles now has a total of 11 medals, making her the most decorated gymnast of all time. Is she the greatest Olympic athlete in USA history? 
I mean, I still think it's Michael Phelps. I mean, when you see like his, his track record and how dominant he was for the stretch of time that he was, I mean, it's impressive because a, a gymnast career is usually a lot shorter than anyone else's. So for her to have been in three Olympics at this point and to consider being 27 to be old in the sport is incredible for what she's doing. But still, I don't think she's the greatest Olympian of all time. I'd still give it to Michael Phelps. I mean, what, 28 medals? He's still got the record for most gold medals in, I think, uh, in an Olympic career. So, uh, yeah. Lil Wayne knows it. He knows Michael Phelps is the GOAT. So I'm going to still say he's the GOAT. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to play, um, you know, I, I don't want to play the game where I agree with everything that Miles Ma- says, but I would have to agree. You know, I just, I, honestly, I don't want to disagree for the sake of disagreeing, you know, so, yeah, I, I do. I mean, I think Simone Biles is incredibly impressive, you know, I, you know, she's a walking muscle. You, you look at her, she's, she's literally a walking bicep. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So, uh, no, I mean, <laughs> look at my, so, but no, but she, you know, it's incredible what she's done. I just think that if you look at Michael Phelps track record, it's hard to say she's better. She's a better Olympian than him to this point. Maybe she, she can get there though. She's that special. Shout out though, before we go to the next one, shout out to Quincy Wilson. He will be the youngest Olympic track and field participant at 16. He will be participating in the four by 400 relays tomorrow. So shout out to him. That's crazy at 16 to be hitting your first Olympics. Wild. Well, everybody else there is way, way older than him. At least talking about seven, eight years older than him. So shout out to him. Patriots and Commanders are no longer a part of the Brandon Ayuk sweepstakes. Ayuk, supposedly, they're still trying to work it out with the Steelers. Will Ayuk be traded before the season starts? Yes. I think yes, just because of the fact that uh, you, you see the the way the 49ers are moving. Like Christian McCaffrey's already kind of referring to him as like his former teammate in a way. Uh, in the past tense, uh, they signed Robbie Anderson or whatever his chosen Anderson uh, to a contract and brought him in. So they're already trying to prepare for life after Brandon Ayuk. And I think the only holdup in the deal right now is they want to get a receiver back also in the deal. They don't want just picks. They want uh, another receiver to, like a talented one. They're not going to get a top tier. So Steelers, you're not going to have to trade George Pickens or any of those other guys. But you're going to have to trade somebody if you really want to get better. Like a duo of Ayuk and Pickens for Fields to throw to. Hmm. His hot take, I think Fields will be the guy, uh, is a lot better than what they have currently constructed. Um, Roman Wilson is going to be good. He's solid. He might be part of the uh, holdup. Maybe he's one of those pieces, those receivers that they don't want to trade that the 49ers are asking for. I mean, John Lynch is a pretty good GM, so I don't think he's going to uh, get out of this with without getting something back. Like, like Denzel said, I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. Um, I think he's out of there. I think it's probably going to be the Steelers. Um, interesting hot take on Justin Fields winning, winning the job aspect of it. That's interesting, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but I heard he's been doing well. But yeah, I think the the Steelers make the most sense. And I heard the reason why the Patriots and the and the uh, the who else the Patriots and the Browns are out, I believe, um, are in part because he didn't want to resign there. Was it the Browns or was it the Patriots and who? I know Patriots yeah. out, but who else? Commanders also. Commanders. The com- oh, well, that's interesting that they're out. I think they just bowed out by themselves. But I know with the Patriots, he said he didn't want to sign with them. He just wouldn't do it. Like he just didn't want to play there. Which is a knock on Drake May, I guess. I don't know, or the way they run situate the situation. I, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I think he'll be traded. I I think there's no chance he'll he'll be on that team, and it'll probably be to the Steelers. Yeah, I think that speaks to also the organization. Like I was reading on it, nobody. It's not those days anymore. The Patriots aren't the prestigious franchise that they once were. So anybody going there, doing it the Patriot way, taking a pay cut, not at all places do not New England. No, <laughs> definitely not. From San Fran too? Nah, I'm good off of that. Last one of the two-minute drill, Sirianni. Jalen Hurts reportedly has different opinions on the offensive approach and how things went last season. Is this a legit beef or is this a prototypical healthy 
disagreement with coworkers. <laughs> I I personally don't think that it is a, a just like a healthy disagreement between you know coworkers or what you'll see normally. I think that Sirianni is the opposite of Jalen Hurts in every single way imaginable. The way he handles situations, the way he handles himself on the sideline. I don't think there there's any real similarity there between them, and I don't think they really see eye to eye in the way that they want to carry themselves in general out there on the field. So, um, and also you got to think about the fact that they were struggling last year too. I mean, it was tough. They they weren't like they. They were good, but they weren't up to their standards, and especially at the end of the season where they really were struggling. So, especially, and it was offensively, that's where the struggles happened. So, I just think with Sirianni being as obnoxious as he is, I, I think it's very easy for a guy like Jalen Hurts, who is he was a classy guy, to bump heads with him um, more regularly. I don't think that's far fetched. I think that was very much in the cards, and I'm not surprised to see that at all. I, I think. We'll see where it goes from here with, uh, going into next year and if they have some success and obviously adding Saquon should make them better. But if they don't win the Super Bowl, I don't think he'll be, I don't think Sirianni will be the coach of the Eagles next year, the year, the following year. I think he'll be gone. And I think in part, a part of the reason will be well, because he rubbed guys in that room the wrong way with the way he acts, in addition to the fact that he came up short. I agree. I think Jalen Hurts, his voice holds a lot of weight in this organization now. I mean, you don't give a guy that much money and not take into consideration what he thinks. So, yeah, Sirianni came back, sure, but he was on the hot seat in the offseason. People were already talking about, is he going to lose his job after that epic collapse? And, sure, some people might blame Jalen Hurts. His play wasn't as good last year. I blame that on the play call. I blame it on the way the offense ran. And hearing reports that, a lot of the offense was run through Sirianni last year. It kind of makes sense why they're butt butting heads because now that they got Kellen Moore in there, I think things will be a lot different. And who knows? That could be your next head coach right there. I mean, Kellen Moore was interviewing for jobs all over the place. Um, I think he's a, a up-and-coming guy, and it would, it would suck to lose someone that – right of an offensive mind. So you, I've seen what he's done with CD and uh, Dak over in in Dallas. Let's see what he can do with AJ and Devonta and Jalen over here. But um, it could be one of those things where he gets a promotion next year and he's the new Eagles coach. Because, yeah, Sirianni does rub people the wrong way. I mean, we saw it on their Super Bowl run and how arrogant he was. And even last year after they beat the Chiefs, how arrogant he was walking out of the stadium. It's like there's a way of doing things, and there's a way to not draw attention to yourself. And he draws all the wrong attention. As y'all know, we talked about it in the intro. We're going to be previewing, predicting, projections of the NFC East. Firing off, getting straight into it. We just talked about the Eagles. Point blank period. It has not been a repeat champion in the division since 04, which was the Eagles when they won it four years in a row. Who wins this division this year? I, I mean, I say the Eagles. Just because there's so much dysfunction in Dallas. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, Jerry Jones is real divisive with his comments about there's no urgency to pay CD, so... CD's not going to report anytime soon. Parsons has no deal. Dak has no deal. So it just feels like this is going to be one of those seasons where there's expectations on Dallas and they're just not going to meet them. I can see them missing the playoffs, honestly, with all this turmoil going on and guys getting fired, people leaving left and right. Um, but I think Philly is the best team in this division. I mean, they added a lot of really good players. They added Saquon. They added a couple of linebackers on defense. And their secondary got a lot better. Um, they're not going to have to rely on Bradbury making mistakes back there anymore. They've got a couple really talented kids coming in the draft. Um, they got a couple guys coming back from last year's draft, like Keely Ringo. So that team, that defense, I think, is going to be a lot better under Vic Fangio. And, uh, of course, the offense is not going to be what it was last year. Uh, I mean, already hearing the reports, Jalen Hurts is – rolling on all cylinders like he's gonna have a really good bounce back year and shoot we could see an mvp i mean he was the mvp two years ago but you know that that shoulder knocked him out of it but 
Yeah, Philly. Philly's the, the team to beat. I mean, Philly is the easy choice. Uh, I think the team that's good to surprise people is Dallas for sure. I think the Commanders will be a little frisky too, but they're not going to win the division. They'll be they'll be frisky. That's the word I used to describe. Whatever frisky, whatever pops in your head when I, when I say frisky, just imagine that, and that's what the Commanders will be. But um, I don't want to do that. <laughs> they're going to be promiscuous, but uh, <laughs> but. But uh, no, in all seriousness, I, I think the Cowboys are the most interesting team in the division uh, for so many reasons. Obviously, the Dak situation to me is the biggest domino to fall. CD, CD will get paid. Um, you know, I, I think he'll get paid. Parsons, I'm not so sure. And Dak, I'm like, I'm really unsure whether or not he'll get paid. And I think, you know, if he has, he's going to have a good regular season. That's what he does. They have a good offensive line. They have an established good team. He is what he is at this point. He's a consistent performer. So I'm just very curious to see if, the, if that performance that he's going to have this year is going to lead them to paying him the big bucks. And I really want to see if he hits the free agent market, what that'll look like. I'll be watching Dallas very closely. That being said, the Eagles should win the division. They should. That's the word I'll use a tone. I won't say will. I'll say should. You know, with Saquon, you never know. We're going to show up, you know, show up to work the next day. I don't know. You know, you know, you never know. You might step down the stairs the weird, a weird way. I don't know, bro. So I'll say should for the Eagles. We'll see. Cowboys or Eagles, though? Here's some uh, pressing questions that within this division comes up specifically staying on the eagles will turnover issues persist for hurts or was last season an arbitration i think that was an anomaly i think i don't i don't really see him making that many bad decisions i think last year he was trying to make the hero play too often which he can do it and he did it two years ago but um Last year was just one of those years where they started off so well, but even in those games where they were winning, everything didn't look right. So uh, down the stretch, you see him trying to force stuff, mainly because like some of these play calls are like, I don't know. It, it was crazy watching them down the stretch, but I do think that he's not going to turn it over as much. I think he's going to be smart with it. Um, he's got the weapons. They've got the play calling now. And, um, if it's not downfield, I mean, Saquon, I could see Saquon having a, a 70, 80 catch season. Like, he's going to really get used out of the backfield like they haven't been able to do uh, since maybe, like, Darren Sproles and Brian Westbrook were there. Like, he's he was a good mix of those, those type of guys. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be different because the running game will be better. Um, so when your running game is better, like you win the line scrimmage the way they do, and you have a guy like Saquon back there, it takes a lot of pressure off of Jalen. Um, if God forbid they run into a team that can stop the run and you put it all on Jalen's shoulders, I that's what I want to see. Uh, but I just think that he'll be better, right? Overall, I think in the in the high pressure moments against the 49ers, the Packers, you know, these teams that are really, really good, if they can take away that run game, make them one dimensional, we're gonna see if Jalen Hurts can go out there and just put the team on his back, make all the necessary throws, be accurate with the football in tight spaces against man coverage. Uh, we're going to see. We're going to see, uh, right? And so I'm very curious about it, but I do think he'll be better overall and there'll be less turnovers. I still don't think that saves Sirianni's job. I think Sirianni ends up getting fired this year. I really do believe that. I don't think they're, I don't think they're winning a, 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 um, a championship. And I do think that even if they win, like because of how he's rubbed people the wrong way, he could still get fired. Like it's one of those things where – he was a Joe Girardi almost took us to the World Series. They still got him out of here just because things might not be right between him and the front office. So that's something to look out for, too. And be careful with Belichick lurking in the grass like a little snake. You never know. That would, that would be a then, uh, backwards move right there. I would. Why do you care, Miles? You're not. You're not an Eagles fan, so you shouldn't care. No, I don't care. But I'm being. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you how it is. Like. Belichick kind of needs to just, you know, ride off into the sunset. I don't, I don't really see him getting one of these like high job. Maybe the the Cowboys just because Jerry Jones is yeah stupid. he's stupid when it comes to things like that. But like, nice. I don't see like Howie and uh, those guys in Philly doing a decision like that. I think they'd lean towards a younger guy like a Kellen Moore or one of these other guys up and coming over a guy who I mean. 
the league's kind of passed them by a little bit. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Looking on over now in Washington, what do y'all expect from Jaden Daniels, his rookie season? What type of stat line do y'all see him having with the commanders? Yo, I'm so serious. He is one of the most interesting people, uh, you know, prospects to me. Because you guys know when we talk amongst ourselves before the draft, I felt like I had my concerns about him. Thin frame, little reckless of a runner, right? Take shots on, on running. But his ability to the football has always been – he's a very good thrower of the football, right, that he is. And all the reports out of Washington is that he it looks sharp. He looks great. Sauce Gardner gave him his, his, uh, his recommendation. You heard that. Right. Um, so I, I'm and I've heard, you know, from, you know, the I mean, the coach, Dan Quinn said, hey, like he's exceeded my expectations and I had high expectations of him. I saw that, too. So I, I'm rooting for him as a as a black quarterback. Obviously, uh, two times a year, I hate his guts, but I, I'm, I'm curious to see, you know, how he does. I think, you know, for me, can you protect yourself running football? Can the offensive line keep you clean? Can you get, generate a run game as well to take some pressure off of you, too? Um, I'll be very curious in watching him play, but he's very, very talented. And I'll be honest, my opinion of him got skewed when I saw in uh, the HBO Hard Knocks that Dave Ball said, hey, I'll trade up for him right now. Like he said that. So I was like, okay, <laughs> well, he knows more than me. So I, he must be the real deal, right? So um, I'm a little worried that the, that the commanders have found their guy. It, it bothers me because that's not good news for me, but I think they may have found their guy. And we'll have to see if he can stay healthy and avoid another RG3 situation, which we don't wish on anybody. So we'll see. Yeah, I think for Jaden Mc... Jaden Daniels, Jaden McDaniel, I'm thinking of the NBA. Uh, it might as well be. It might as well be him. <laughs> I th- JD, JD. I, let me just do that. JD, I think he'll he'll have a solid year stats wise. Um, I do think there's going to be some growing pains because, like in the SEC, he did have uh, a good core of receivers, like neighbors to beat guys and Brian Thomas Jr. to beat guys. So, But he does have Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson. He's got guys in Washington to kind of help help him this rookie year. But there's going to be some growing pain. Like, even in the uh, joint scrimmages with the Jets, he was, he was having a tough time. Granted, it is against the Jets defense, and um, I think most teams might have trouble with this, te- this defense this year. Um, but I just think that depending on the schedule, because I haven't really looked at it, because I'm not a Commanders fan, depending on their schedule, I mean, he's going to have some growing pains in September and October. And usually later in the year, once you get your groove and you kind of figure the, the league out a little bit, um, maybe we'll see something. But I think the, the lightness, the weight – could be an issue like running he's gonna have to slide can't be taking hits like you were in at lsu because some of those are life-threatening hits that you were taking so um he's gotta he's gotta be smarter he's gotta realize you can throw it away it's, it's only a penalty if you throw it just randomly at a undisclosed location in the, the field of play but like this kid is really talented i i get that but um Rookies do have their their growing pains, and Washington doesn't really have a track record of developing guys that great. So I just want to see him, you know, slowly get better each week, week to week. Jay and Daniels, one of the rookie quarterbacks that will be playing from day one. A quarterback that does also have some question marks in this same division, Danny Dimes, Daniel Jones, whatever name you want to call him. We've heard all great reports about elite neighbors and how great he is, and nobody's seen a talent like this in a New York Giants jersey in so long. This, that, and the third with neighbors, Jalen Hyatt, Wondell Robinson. Is this a year that we can see an improved and more consistent Daniel Jones? I think so. Um, I think he'll be closer to what he was in the year that they went to the playoffs in 2022, um, right? I mean, that little run and 
be the Vikings. I think he'll be closer to that than what he's been, you know, just in previous years. And, and it's because the offensive line got better, really. More And Neighbors is huge, and he's going to have a great rookie year as long as he stays healthy. I believe that. He's a guy who I think the Giants have had a lot of drafts over the years. Very few of them have been blue chip players when you have a first round pick like that. Very few of those first round picks have turned out to be that way early on in their career. I do think Neighbors has like all pro potential as a rookie. I do think he's that good. I I really do. Now, will it happen? Probably not because he has to get the ball and we have to see what Daniel Jones can deliver, if he can deliver it. Um, but it's cert- there's certainly an opportunity for that to happen. Uh, but, you know, with Daniel Jones, I think, you, again, going back to that offensive line, Illuminor, you know, you replace Evan Neal with Illuminor, who's a, who's a good right tackle in the NFL by, by NFL standards, um, and then Runyon on the line, too. they gotten better, and, I, I just, and I've heard that coming out of camp, that the line is better, which has really given me some optimism. I think he's going to have time. He's going to step in the pot, clean pockets more often than he isn't, and he's going to be able to make plays and make throws. And I think it's going to open up the field for Wondell Robinson having a guy like Neighbors on the field and Hyatt and Slayton and those guys. So there's going to be opportunities for Giants to make plays. They're going to be a better offensive team. And if you think about the Giants' problem over the last few years, it hasn't been really been defense. It's been offense that's held that team back. So if you can score more points, you'll be a bit better. Um, I think six to seven wins is probably a fair number. I, I'm probably, I know we're not playing that game right now, so I can change this opinion. We're probably not in the prediction part of our show. But – I'll just say I think Daniel Jones is going to have a much better year. I think he will throw for the most yards he's thrown for in his career. And I think you're going to see him throw anywhere from 3,500 to 4,000 yards. Which, And if he throws 4,000 yards, then we have to have a conversation about whether or not he's here next year. And they just keep the cap hit and keep on going with him. Because even if you do, if you, any, think about any – if I just said, hey, 4,000 yards, tw- uh, tw- 27 touchdowns, right, and – seven picks you're saying hey that's that's a quarterback that's that's a uh a, a 50 to 60 million a 55 million dollar a year guy right there you're saying that if i don't get if I, if I put no name on it i just say hey that's what those are the stats so if daniel jones does that he now becomes a bargain instead of a liability on that cheaper contract because you're going to see Dak get paid 60 million dollars so if he plays well enough he's a chance to extend his stay in new york doesn't mean he's the guy but he's a chance to so we're going to see we're going to see but i do think he will play better because of the offensive line and also the combination of that with the swagger neighbors and they give that offense. It's going to be different. Real 1A guy. I mean, I saw one reporter. I, I'm, I, I keep rambling. I see one reporter go out there and tell me, Connor Hughes came out and said, hey, I've watched Giants camps for a long time. I've watched Jets camps for a long time. He looks better than Garrett Wilson did. He looked better than OJ, uh, OBJ did in, in their rookie years. I've, I've never seen a rookie receiver this good. I heard that too. So reason for Giants fans to get excited, which is, you know, it's been rare around here. So I'm excited to hear it, to see about it. Hey, as long as he's not punching helmets, he should definitely be fine for this year, which I don't think that's smart. You we never said he was a valedictorian. <laughs> we never you said he was a valedictorian. Hand. He didn't say that's, he was smart. That's the biggest part of your game. Like, please, I, I get thrown, you know, you want to make sure you're not getting punched your rookie year, but not punching right. helmets. Let the helmet get off first, and then you would get busy. Not advocating violence on the show, by the way. We don't advocate violence on the bench mob ENT. But before we do – our predictions of wins before for each team. Any other storylines that stick out to y'all that y'all are looking forward to in watching the NFC East this upcoming season? How the Cowboys do? Yo, Miles, you're on. You're on. Uh, you're on mute, by the way, bro. Not usually. Go ahead. Um, mainly like the Cowboys. I think that's the biggest kind of domino to, to fall possibly here. Because they're not going to be able to realistically pay all three of their stars, and sometimes that like affects play as the season goes on. And you see disgruntled, you might see disgruntled Dak or uh, a disgruntled Micah Parsons. Because if, if you're gonna, you're gonna have to pick two of the three. And in my opinion, I would pick the two on offense. And I mean Parsons, you could get a boatload of something for him and any team would be lining up for that guy if he's on the trade block because he's looking for like bosa money and bosa money is it used to be what quarterbacks were getting so uh i get why jerry jones is hesitating to pay these guys um but like cd cd's earned that contract don't don't uh mess with the chemistry like this is your best chance at 
making the playoffs. If CD's not happy and he's not playing and he's holding out, um, this is not a good team. Like, Giants are probably, I think, a better team if uh, CD's not out there for them, in my opinion. Um, so, and then the Dak Domino. I mean, he did get a big contract the last time around. Um, he hasn't really won in the playoffs, which you would have liked. But at this point in his career, like, he's a really good starting quarterback. Like, the numbers don't lie. Um, so you, you're going to have to decide, am I going to give him 60 per year? Or are we going to move off a of deck and then it's a new era, sort of, which that would be kind of dumb. Because Dak feels like one of those guys who should be here for 15 years. Because, I mean, you got lucky you draft him in the fourth round. Like, that usually doesn't happen. Just like the 49ers getting Purdy. That doesn't happen. Taking a guy in the last pick and turns into a Super Bowl caliber quarterback. So, um, Cowboys fans, they love Dak. They hate Dak at times. But, like, this is the best quarterback you've had since Romo? No. Aikman. Because he's better than Romo. I'm saying it there. Like, he's a better quarterback than what Romo was. Um, but, yeah, Cowboys are the biggest domino to fall. Or whatever happens with them could shake up the league pretty much. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, but the it's, it's, it's easy the Cowboys. They're the most interesting, interesting team maybe in all of the league. I don't think there's a team that's more interesting than them, in my opinion, because – it's the quarterback drama. It's not so much about, I don't care about CeeDee Lamb or Micah Parsons getting paid. No one cares, like, besides Cowboys fans. Dak, if you move on from Dak Prescott, what do you do from there? Like, what's the, the contingency plan? Where do, you, where do you go? You won't be a good, a bad enough team to draft a, a quarterback high in the draft. You just won't. So, like, and, and is there a quarterback in this draft class that you're really eyeing that you love? I mean, maybe, there, you know, guys always emerge. But I'd be very curious to see what the plan is you know afterwards what the plan is um after Dak if they decide to move off of Dak because look he's gonna make a really compelling case for himself he's gonna throw for you know damn near 40 touchdowns he's gonna he's gonna throw less than 10 picks or around 10 picks this is what he does every year he has a great statistical season every season for the most part he's even been in the MVP conversation um in recent years so moving off of a guy like that is tough and I'll be very curious to see how they go about doing it if they do it and We'll just watch as time goes on. Like, are you guys going to pay him? Are they not? Is he, is he going to become... If he hits the free agency market, he'll be the greatest quarterback to ever do so. Like, Kirk Cousins is the best free agent quarterback ever. Dak is far better than him. So, it'll be really interesting to see if he hits the market. And if he does, I'm going to say this right now, I'll make a sales pitch for myself to him to come join the Giants. I think it makes a lot of sense. I know Giants fans didn't love it the first time I said it. I don't, I don't care what people love or what they don't like or what they hate. I don't really care about that. It would be a good move for the Giants to invest in that because you could still go draft your quarterback of the future behind them. You give them a three-year deal worth $60 million, $65 million a year. I don't care. Bam. The money's there. The money's there. So I'd be interested in doing that if, if it ends up happening. Hopefully it does. Looking at win projections, over, under, four and a half wins for the New York Giants. I say over. I think yeah, the, the defense got over. a lot better. Um just by adding Brian Burns, and you still got Dexter Lawrence out there, and Deontay Banks is another year wiser in the league. So, um, and then you're bringing Malik Neighbors into the fold. I think him just being on the team adds a couple wins right off the bat. Like he's a big play waiting to happen. Um, he's their best receiver they've had playmaking wise since Odell, and it does give Odell Jamar Chase vibes the way he's been playing in training camp. So those are difference makers. Those are guys that can uh, destroy a game plan on Sundays. So, yeah, I think they could win more than four and a half games. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. For a lot of reasons I stated, the better offensive line, neighbors being an alpha, a true alpha wide receiver, being a Pro Bowl level talent in year one, I think, you, you know, you're going to smash – that passed the four four win total and the the record the, the uh, schedule is not you know daunting it's not a crazy schedule right you got Tampa Bay you've got New Orleans who might be the worst team in football this year um you know and then you've got um the Vikings to open up the year right as well and so I just 
I, I just, you know, I, I think the Giants have a good recipe here to have a successful season after no one expected anything from them. And again, it's it's, it's all going to come down to the offensive line play. I, I, a defensive line, notice how I didn't talk about them. I ain't worried about them. Brian Burns going to get sacks. Brian Burns is going to get 11 to 12 sacks at a minimum. That's that's just going to be what it is. And and Dex Lawrence is, gonna, is an all-pro. He's the, the second best D-tackle in football, right? Um, so I really have no concerns there. Uh, I think Kayvon will be good on defensive end too as well. So I, I think the defensive line is the strength of that defense. They're going to be fine defensively. It's just about offense. Can the line protect? Can Daniel Jones play with some conviction, which I think he will. He's playing for his career, in my opinion. If he loses his starting job here, I don't think he'll be a starter anywhere else in the, for the rest of his career. I, I don't believe so. So he needs to, you know, it's, it's put up or shut on time for him um, too. And I know that, you know, watching hard knocks and seeing the Giants go flirt with other quarterbacks and, you know, give their assessment of Jaden Daniels and see the trade up attempt on on draft night. That's hard for him to watch. That is a competitor um, as well. So I'm rooting for Daniel Jones. I'm rooting, I'm hoping that he does well. I mean, we'll see what happens, but I, I think they're a team looking at at least seven wins. I think seven wins is kind of where they're going to top out around that number. Um, if they, if they go past that, I should play the lottery. It's clearly something great happened. Say seven wins over it under seven and a half wins for the commanders. I'm going to say under. I think rookie quarterback um, is a different regime. Everybody's getting adjusted. Uh, they lost some pieces on defense. I, I just think that with this team currently constructed, they're not ready yet. Like, they still need a year to gel, a year to figure stuff out. They're on the right track. I mean, I think they do have a – good quarterback for the future with Jaden Daniels. So that's one domino. You still got Terry McLaurin, got weapons on offense. But, um, of course, you know, to win in this league, you need more than just a good offense. So uh, I don't really see their their secondary being that good. Their uh, Elijah Forbes, Forbes, he was a turnstile today at the joint practice with the Jets. So. If he's out there, let it rip. Call goes. Like, just let it fly. Um, this defense isn't going to be that good this year. So, mm. definitely going to say under. They're probably the worst team in the division. I agree. And in part, in, in large part because of the defense, like Miles said. I, I Every time I look up and I, I read something about the commander's defense, it's about how Emmanuel Forbes, that cornerback they drafted in the first round a, a year a year ago or so, is always getting cooked. And so, look, they have a real problem with their secondary. That, sh- that was an issue they had last year. That's an issue they've had for years now. And it's going to take, you know, Peters, the new GM, more time than just a off season, a single off season to change the, the 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 narrative over there to change the culture there and bring them back to you know or i shouldn't say back i don't know when the hell they were ever winning i guess i wasn't alive for it but just bring them to a place where they are winning and so um it's gonna take time it's gonna take time i don't think they're gonna be great right away i think the giants will still have the number um as well i don't think that that rivalry is gonna turn in their favor to be honest and you know they're not they, they'll be competitive they'll be frisky like i said they're a frisky group they're whatever frisky means to you that's what they'll be and so I think they're going to win around four to five games, four to five games, maybe six, six, win, six games would be a nice little season for them. This is this season's all about the development of Jaden Daniels for them. Yeah, that's what it's about. You have a quarterback you can trust. Now you can now it becomes very easy to build on the rest of your football team on a discount because now you're paying this quarterback who's a franchise level player. Nothing pennies. And so that's what this season has to be about for them. It's not about wins and losses. If you're a commander's fan, worry about wins and losses. You worry about all the wrong things. And you don't understand how the NFL really works with your rookie quarterback. It's a complete reset. So that's they have a grace year. This is the grace period. But they can get their ass kicked in the, in the process. Complete reset. I believe, and you know, some may disagree. I believe the Cowboys needed to do a complete reset ten years ago. They should have been blew this up, really built this up correctly. They've had a terrible foundation. The studs have been bad in Dallas for a while. The over under for Dallas is eight and a half wins. What do y'all see? That's I'll take the over. I'm gonna take the over. I, I'm, because because the, the the team isn't that much different. There are there's issues in the locker room. Yeah, there's issues with, with the front office. But Dak's gonna go out there and play football at a high level. He he 
He is itching to get to free agency. You don't think he wants to get to free agency? I'd rather go to free agency and have to deal with an internal battle with Jerry Jones asking for money that he doesn't think I deserve clearly because I would have been paid already if he thought I deserved it. So I'm wait, I'm trying to get to free agency. I know if I have a good year this year, if I know if I, if I throw 35 touchdowns and I don't throw more than 10 picks, I am going to get the most money that any quarterback has ever gotten ever, period, because they ain't put that cap on the quarterback situation quite yet with those with the contracts. They talked about it, but they ain't done it. So he's, he's, he's trying to clean up. He's trying to clean up. So I think he's going to play really, really good football, high-level football. CD will report because these football players are oh, going to play tough and not show up or whatever. And you're going to be there on opening day. You're going to be there. All right, you're going to play the season and you're going to you're going to inherit all that risk and take on all that risk that comes with playing without a guaranteed contract, because that's what the NFL, NFLPA has allowed to be the case in football. It's just the reality of it. OK, you guys didn't fight for, you know, uh, guaranteed contracts or even part major, you know, three, four guaranteed contracts. Yeah, I didn't get that. So those guys are going to play well. Parsons will be effective. Right. Um And all that stuff. And I had something about Parsons I thought about, but I'll, I'll, I won't go off topic. But. Um, yeah, I think I think they'll be a good team. Uh, the defense is still there. Everything's still intact. There's no reason to believe they won't win at least 10 games this year because the team's the same. The, the, the makeup of the team is the same. If it falls off the rails, well, McCarthy is a, is, is a dead man walking anyways. He'd be let go. And then here comes Bell to, just, to try to save the day, right? Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm very interested in this football team. I want to see how stupid Jerry Jones truly is. He's going to replace Dak Prescott and get that level of quarterback play. You really are an idiot. So I'm very interested to see. I, I can't I can't wait to watch the Cowboys. I, I've never been excited to watch the Cowboys before. I, I cannot wait. I'm so serious. I do think the uh, Cowboys will win over eight and a half games. Um, barely, though. because Their schedule is a little tougher than uh, last year. I mean, they got Ravens on the schedule. They got mm. Lions, 49ers, Eagles twice, Texans, Bengals. So those are those are games that I don't really see them uh, winning. So, um, and then yeah, like you said, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that we probably don't know about, but we do. Jerry Jones loves to talk to the to the media, but for them this year is it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Like they're really gonna have to win. This is, this is like a last dance. It feels like the last dance for the the Cowboys with with Dak, if things go the way they're looking. I mean, you heard him in training camp. He sounds like he's content to just go into free agency. He's like, not every quarterback pl- plays their whole career with the you know, team that they're drafted. So when I hear quotes like that, I'm like, okay, game on. He's, he's going to play good, and he's ready to get up out of here. Um, if you don't want to pay him what he's worth, somebody will. So... Uh, but definitely taking the over, over eight and a half. Before we go on the Eagles for their over and under, you mentioned something about Michael Parsons. If you yeah. could, as as they said, you know, back in school, if you could share with the class what you have on your mind, we would appreciate. It. No, I was re- I, I was reading something the other day. I don't I don't I don't know where it was or if it was a video, but someone said that Michael Parsons only gets his sacks against bad teams and that against really good teams like the 49ers or the Packers or whatever, like you don't feel his presence. He is a generational bad team performer. Like he just goes, he goes crazy against the bad teams, against the bad lines. But when you go up against these really good offensive lines and these good offensive systems in the NFL, he just doesn't do the same thing. And and I thought about it. I'm like, there may be truth to that. I don't think he had a sack in that game where they got dismantled by the 49ers last year. I don't remember that. You know, I don't remember like really feeling that guy's presence in every game that they played, every prime time big game against great teams. And then to Miles's point, they play a, a really tough schedule against the Ravens and the Packers and the 49ers and they got the Bengals and, you know, um, and all that stuff. So I'll be very interested to see if he, you know, dispels that rumor a little bit. I think he's obviously a, gener- a really good pass rusher. I was a generational. He's a really good player, an elite level player, obviously. Uh, all pro is a rookie level guy, like, right? Um, but I'm just curious to see, right, if, if he can, you know, tra- that high level of play translates to playing against good teams. That's all. There, there may be something to that. There may be something to that. Well, to your point, I just looked up the, the schedule. We we can break it down. That Giants game where they won 40-zip, 
he only had one sack. The Jets game, he had two sacks. The Cardinals, one sack. That game against the Patriots, zero sacks. 49ers, that slacking. 42-10 loss, zero sacks, four tackles. Chargers, one sack. Rams, one sack. Philly, one and a half. Giants, zero. Which, yeah, Giants, zero. Carolina, two and a half. Washington, bad team, one and a half. Seattle, zero. Philly, only one. Buffalo, zero. Miami Dolphins, half a sack. Lions, zero sacks. Washington Commanders, one sack. That's all flash year. He had a down year for the guy we all you know, think quiet, of him to be. Quiet as kept. He had a down year by his standards for sure. And there is something to this idea he doesn't perform well against these great offensive lines or even above average offensive lines. So really, yeah, man, the Cowboys got a lot of questions, man. This is this is going to be a fun year to watch those guys to see how they react to what's what's coming. I'm very interested to watch them. I'll be watching with bated breath, as they say. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, yo, funny enough, like he had the most sacks of his career last year. Funny how that works. Yeah. Um, Funny how that works. But like, you also got to take it into consideration that like he's getting double team, triple team, because you already know who their best pass rusher is. I mean, if you see him on a one on one, he's probably getting by that person. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't want to discredit him and say he's not like as good as like advertised. Like, sure, maybe against those better teams, he might have struggled. But against the 49ers, they got Trent Williams, probably a Hall of Fame left tackle. And it's, like, hard to get around that guy. I mean, he's been, what, an all-pro for the past – it's between, like, him and Tyron Smith for the best tackles of the last decade. So, um, yeah, I think he's worth the money. He's, like – he's really good. But I don't know if it'll be the Cowboys who are paying him that big contract next. And to your point, because Tone's on mute. To your point, you did hear the, um, you know, the the rumors out there that he had been pumping heads with guys in the front office too. That Michael wasn't exactly beloved by the uh, the higher ups over there or by the, the team staff. You know, there's there's rumors about that too. The whole podcast. Yeah, quite he's, he's immature. You can you see that well, yeah. he is. Because you see so, it. You see it. Like yeah. I mean, everything he's doing, like with Leach Report and. And then C.J. Stroud, I mean, <laughs> I. C.J. Stroud is an interesting situation, by the way, in and of itself, too. Yeah. And we'll get there. We'll get there. I, I think he's going to be great. I, I love him. But I, there is an image. There's, he's, a, he's, he's different. He's not, what, what does Colin Coward call it? He's not quarterback you in the way that he like, He likes it, you know? So I'm, I'm very, he's like your typical quarterback. So I'm yeah. very interested to see how his career continues to go and, but he's so gifted, and I'm rooting for him. And the Texans, man, that's my that's my, my, my that's gonna be my second team. Don't be, I'm, I'm I'm about to adopt them. I be in Houston enough. I be in Houston enough. I'm about to, you see, Miles have a second team. I'm about to adopt the Texans, man. I'm, I'm about to get there with them. I'm telling you that right now. I be in, I be in Houston more than Steve Francis. I said, I said, I'm telling you. I say. If it's on. I say oh, I say oh. I think they're gonna have a lot better <laughs> of a season. I can see thirteen wins, um, just because Jalen Hurts is gonna play a lot better. Um, hey, last one. Look at it. They Eagles twelve and a half wins. Win. Eleven games over under year, twelve. I don't know what the count was, but it was over double digits. So, um, and they're bringing back basically the same team from last year, adding a couple really good pieces. Uh, Devin. Devin White on defense at linebacker. You got Saquon on offense. Like, the defense is going to be better. The offense is going to be better. And playing the Giants and Commanders twice, that's, that's a bonus for their win total. So, hey, it's not, it, last year was no walk in the park playing the Giants to them, which is interesting, right? When I wanted to be, when I wanted them to, the Giants to get their ass whooped, they didn't. The, the Eagles went in there and they lost. 
And I don't think it was like a fluke either. Like they just didn't play well. Like they hadn't been playing well. Okay, they'll be better. Saquon changes things. Saquon has some juice because Giants fans are going to be calling him all types of names and everything like that. I'll probably be one of those fans calling him names. But regardless of the fact, and I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't, I have nothing against Saquon. But, you know, I think they probably break even. I think they probably win around 12 games. You know, I think 12 games is fair. I think that's kind of what I see for them this year. Uh, I am curious to see. Cause I, I've heard from football nerds that I a lot of different podcasts I listen to that teams kind of figured out them figured them out schematically, and when that happens, you're in trouble. No matter how much talent you have on your roster, you're in real trouble. Um, if teams have figured it figured you out schematically and understand what you're doing and kind of can figure out holes in your passing game, your offensive line protections, things like that. Um, so I'd be very interested to see if that's true, if that holds up, and if they do have some struggles at some point in the year um, as well. I think Sirianni's on thin ice, and I really, I really do believe that. I, I think that team was very close to turning on him. I think that could happen in the middle of the year, and I, I wouldn't surprise me if it did. So, you know, these things hardly ever go the way we think it's going to go. It's the NFL. It's crazy. They're going to be successful by, you know, by most team standards. But will they be a Super Bowl contender? Will they be a team we think could win a Super Bowl? I don't know about all that. I really believe that the Sirianni thing is going to be an issue. And I think that at some point it might rear its head. So I say 12 wins on the nose. Hey, Sirianni, though, he might give himself a little bit more leash to start off the beginning of the season. Because he did something very uncharacteristic. He took responsibility. And I think it was a press conference last week where he said last year was on him. So that's different from what we've normally heard from Sirianni. So that might give him a little little wiggle room to get it off the season. And to your point with it, the Eagles had 11 wins last year. So 11-12 wouldn't be too far off the head. Looking at the college football season is about to start in, I believe, what, two, three weeks? We're about to have college football back. Before we even talk about that and what we think about the new playoff format, I know Greg is an uh, yeah, avid me, player of the college no. football game with it being back. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm waiting to get what out of rating 10, would you the give the game being back? What do you like about it most? They put into it, a lot of our listeners – the way viewers, your shadow are moves, huge. your shadow when you're I've running, the formations, all the, the stories, the, 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 the attention to detail with the stadiums huge, and the props and the buildings the around the stadiums. Game. Like it's real. You can really see those things in real life um, as well. I think they did a phenomenal job. They took, they took their time. It was a 14 year wait, I believe. It was worth every year. I mean, this is this game is incredible um, as well. Only my only regret is they didn't come out a year before because I, I would be doing damage to people with Caleb Williams um, if I had him or Drake May or Jaden Daniels. But um, no, it's a lot of fun, man. I, 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 what was the other part of the question? I think I missed the other part of the question. What was that? I answered it. And so, yeah, I think, I think it's amazing. I think the game's amazing. Um, so much fun to play dynasty mode, building your own team, recruiting, going out there, doing, you know, being a nerd, going and getting players, um, the road to glory with the, you know, where you can make your own players. So much fun, um, as well. It's just so accurate and realistic. And the throwing mm-hmm. motions and so animation is so good. I, I can nerd out about the game all day. I really enjoy it. I think they've got Madden beat right now. I don't like the the ability, you know, you can't tackle as well, but that's realistic. It's college. These guys don't tackle as well. So you're going to score 50 points in a game. It's just going to happen. Um, but I really, really enjoy it. I, I'm interested to see what Madden does to kind of respond. I don't think they're in competition, but you want people buying a game in Madden too. Uh, I think College Football is one of those classic games, probably the game of the year in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. Hey, I heard somebody say this, and they broke it down perfectly. This generation, our generation of video game players that play 2K, Madden, college football, now that it's back, we are the era of GMs because we love that aspect of playing the game. It's not so much even even the game at time. Like growing up, it was the video game aspect, but. I'm seeing most people are like, yo, I like the part to be able to recruit and stuff. Like, that's our era. We literally are a bunch of little wannabe GMs and recruiters, and that we find actual joy and excitement out of it. New playoff format. Instead of the four teams, now it will be 
12 playoff uh, spots. I'd say. Maybe. If y'all had if you think any predictions, it, who you think had, uh, are some of the teams that should be Texas a part of that college football season. playoff? Yeah. Um, and a second part of that, how many uh, teams of the 12 so I think do you believe you have in the SEC? Teams that lose a couple games, they'll still be ranked high because the schedule, the, so like, the schedule is going to be so tough. And that's what the, the committee takes into consideration at the end of the year. I mean, that's why you saw Florida State get bumped out, even though they were undefeated, they won their conference, yada, yada. But their their resume wasn't as impressive as some of the other teams that they could have picked, like putting Alabama in there. Like Alabama's a team that, I mean, one, they had Nick Saban. He's no longer there. They got the coach from Washington now who I think that was a good hire. Um, I think Georgia's still the cream of the crop. It was funny how they got bumped last year. I mean, it it felt like it was just fatigue. Uh, by the committee. They were tired of seeing Georgia up there, and all it was going to take is that one loss, and they were out of there. But they still got Carson Beck coming back. Um, they always regroup. Uh, that team is always good. Just just make sure that their their cars are parked during the season, that their <laughs> their guys aren't driving too often. You know? um, and then Texas, you got Quinn Ewer, Ewers, He's coming back. Texas is going to be really good. Um, so, yeah, those top three, Georgia, Texas, Alabama, uh, like you still got Jalen Milrow. I think he could win a Heisman. I mean, if you look at his skill set, his resume, he's going to be a year wiser at quarterback. I do think he could be a top prospect next year. Um, and if we look at the job that uh, – the Washington coach did developing Michael Penix, and now he gets a dynamic weapon like Jalen Melro. Um, sky's the limit for Alabama. I mean, I'm sure, sure they lost a, a good amount of guys that were saving guys. I mean, it's similar to Kentucky, but um, I do think Alabama is still going to be good, just because they're Alabama and some of the main stays are still there. They got the quarterback. So, if Jalen Milrow continues to play the way he looks, it ain't gonna go the way you think it's gonna go with him. I, he needs to he needs to throw the ball. He needs to throw the ball with more accuracy. I mean, that's his big thing. He is a he, if if not, when it's time for him to go to the NFL draft, and you know he tries to pursue that, they're gonna be trying to get him to play D lineman or something, or go play a running back or a corner or something. They're gonna try to change his position. So that'll be interesting, but. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right by everything you said. Those the SEC will dominate. You know, they'll have a lot of teams in in, in consideration, um, too. I mean, some some sleeper teams that I thought Oregon's gonna be really really good. Uh, Oregon's gonna be in the conversation, um, as well. I, I am curious about Nebraska. I don't think they're gonna be like a college football playoff team, but they'll be a bowl team with that quarterback who looks like Pat Mahomes and has the same body language as Pat Mahomes. It's crazy that kid, um, too. I think his name's Riola or something like that, um. Too. There's a lot of really interesting teams this year. It's it's pretty open. Ohio State is going to be incredible. They've got a a, a wide receiver. He was a freshman last year, I believe. His name's Smith. I think it's Jeremiah Smith. Um, he's incredible. He's he is incredible. They're saying he's the second coming of like the Garrett Wilson types and the um the guy the kid up in Seattle. What's what's his name? Uh, God damn, I forget his name. Uh, the kid up in Seattle as well. The light skinned kid. You know what I'm talking about. Um. And Jigba, yeah, you see, you see why I forgot his name. It's crazy, but yeah, and Jigba as well. So yeah, it it'll be interesting to see how they come. I think Will Howard, the transfer from Kansas State, is going to be really, really good for them too, um, as well. And then look, let's not let's let's not beat around the bush, okay? I am interested in the quarterback play in this year, and, and I'm Jigba. interested also in Colorado because let's be honest, the Colorado makes this the world go around in college football. I am so interested to see if that with that improved offensive line. Because they got the kids Seaton to come, the top uh, recruit to come play, or I believe it was right or left tackle, and they they fortified the offensive line to see how Shador does, and to see Shador's draft stock and the way we, we these teams talk about him throughout the year. 
that is going to be the most one, the most interesting storyline in college football, in my opinion, seeing how teams talk about drafting him. Because you, when you draft Shador Sanders, you draft him. You, know, you know, it's a lot to come with him. You know, being Deion Son, you know, being doing podcasts with overtime. Too bad overtime. Chris ain't on the podcast today to talk about it. The acquisition, I know it was a big deal for him. I mean, um, he, might, he might pop up. Just say overtime three times in the mirror. <laughs> He just say just say up. overtime just say overtime megan it'll pop up <laughs> anyways uh <laughs> you know um you know uh yeah man i mean I, i'm very interested to see how that goes with Chador and the, the the rhetoric and the conversation around him and his um his game i i, I want to see that i hope he does well i saw him him get a comparison to joe burrow the other day from an nfl scout which is pretty cool and i can see that a little bit he's a really good pocket passer uh but i'll be watching him closely like i watch them every year and then yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of really good teams around there. LSU is going to be good. They have Lacey, the kid, the, the the next up wide receiver after neighbors left, and those guys, um, and their quarterback's not too bad. Nussmeyer is not too bad um, at all. So it, it's going to be open once you get outside of that top four, in my opinion. I think Quinn Ewers over in Texas has to look over his shoulders with uh, Arch being there. I do believe that. I do think at some point if, they, if he's not balling or not playing the way he's supposed to play, he could be out of there. I, I wasn't impressed with yours as, as much as anybody else. I think he has a great arm, but just some of the precision passing, you know, worries me a little bit um, with him. Like the intermediate throws, right? The short throws, the, the ones that should be layups. I think he misses too often. So we'll see. Um, and Ole Miss with the kid Jackson Dart will be interesting too. And also their SEC team. Um, so I'll be interested. And then also, uh, uh, honorable mention, Cam Ward. Cam Ward and, and Donovan Smith over in Houston. Cam Ward in Miami. Donovan Smith in Houston. Both those guys are very interested in. Cam Ward is probably the most physically talented quarterback in the class um, over in Miami. So I'm very interested to see him. Has a hose for an arm. Was at Washington State playing in that open, like spread offense year for years. And now he's going to Miami to play on the big stage and get to give himself a real chance. And I think he can get drafted high when it's all said and done because he, he's the most physically gifted guy. And Donovan Smith is a guy we sleep on. Josh, Josh, think Josh Allen build, you know, but black. But like him, like him, like you know, that's that. So I really am excited about him over in Houston, and just to watch these quarterbacks, man, see what we have, we have going on there. But yeah, you know, I can talk to you guys more about college football now because I'm playing the damn game, and I'm I'm gonna be locked in all season. I want to watch these guys in real life. So yeah, I'm locked in, man. Oh, and Rutgers might win ten games this year, which is fun. Football? They might. Rutgers football might win ten games. Their their defense is really good. The the the, the um and their <laughs> Wait, the are you going, the uh, are you based off of the game? No. No, 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 no. I'm being real with you. Like, they might win 10 games this year. Their defense is really good, and the, their uh, schedule in the Big Ten isn't as strong as it normally is. Like, they're not playing the same monsters with the, with regularity. So they have a chance to win 10 games, man. If they can get decent quarterback play, they'll win about 10 games, which is crazy, by the way, for Rutgers. And Shiano's a great coach. You know, he's, he's building that thing up. So I think they're, they're going to be in good. Rutgers is going to be the place to be this year, guys. Basketball, football. Rutgers is going to be the place to be. I'm telling you, man. Rutgers I'm, I'm going to go out to a couple games. Rutgers basketball is going to be fun to see in the NIT. <laughs> Yo, you, this nigga, you're tough in the pocket. <laughs> you think, do you think Dylan Harper and Ace are going to the NIT? Is, that's crazy. Okay, Kentucky gonna, will, will Kentucky be better than Rutgers this year? Hell yeah. All right. In the podcast, bro. In the podcast. He's out of his mind. Hey, to, to Greg's point, this year we are definitely going to be more locked on college football. It'll probably be end up coming in dag near every episode until the season is done. Just kind of like last year we did, it kind of tailed off because – like he said, the biggest storyline of why a lot of people are tuned in is Colorado. It's the same thing about Caitlin Clark. Colorado's the Caitlin Clark of college football. It's a lot of people that wasn't watching college football till Dion and Shador was roly, roly, wrist, wrist, all that coming back. until they came Shout up to the scene. Shout out to Robert Shout out to them. I am very intrigued to see how they do. I, I think this is Dion's school, last year. Hey, hey, I, mean, get his I think degree. he's done after this. He's coaching, I feel, because his son is there. So. Once his sons is done, even if the other one comes back, Shiloh. Yeah. He done. Yeah. That's a Jerry Jones hire. <laughs> That's a Jerry Jones hire. So one more year, maybe. One more year, maybe. 
that we see Dion in Colorado. But after that, I think he's done. I think he might try to go to the NFL. Yeah. I think y'all yeah, mentioned Belichick. It's an, if 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 the opening happens, if an opening happens in Dallas, trust and believe. Colorado, the glasses, the all that. Bye. I'll I'll pay y'all to get out my contract and go coach the Cowboys, and he'll have a long leash with Jerry Jones over there. He he might be there for another 10, 15 years if he gets that job. So I think that's how that goes. We're going to end off the show with our new segment. Every show we will have this segment. Each of us will give one. It don't have to be necessarily food. It don't have to be necessarily sports. It could be food. It could be movies. Turn up the heat. Hot Cheetos Our hot take segment. Before I give y'all my hot take that I've been sitting on for years, do y'all have a hot take to share with us for this? My hot take was going to be I think Aaron Rodgers could win another MVP this year. Um, I think the way the Jets are constructed, they can win games. And I think if he plays anywhere near the way he did two, three years ago, um, it's, it's possible. And then they're possibly getting Devontae at the, the deadline. That's inevitable. Um, that's just going to add to it. Um, I mean, he looks good in training camp. Like, he's not missing any throws. Um, he oh, gets... is about Jalen Hurts again? Huh? Is this about Jalen Hurts again? No, I said Aaron Rodgers. Oh, I think said Jalen Hurts. I'm like, yo, just oh. say you love the dude already. Oh. Damn. That brother, <laughs> that brother's going to have to wait till next year. He's going to have to wait. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, watch. Turning back the hands of time. I think he can have a, a great season, win the division, get MVP, and We'll see what happens in the playoffs. That's the that's the only hurdle in his career is the playoffs. So I'm interested to see. It's a big hurdle. Yeah, it's a big hurdle. So I'm interested to see what happens um, in January. And I don't know if it happens, but I could definitely see where you're coming from with that. Just like I said today, the way Nikola Jokic played today, they lost. But he going, he's going to probably have another MVP before he, he retires. The way he played today and he had them in position to actually win, granted, we talked about it. We saw that shooting was not going to last four quarters. It was not going to last four quarters. But outside of that, he was he was cooking. He was cooking them. And it's him. And we be honest, he had Bogdanovich, but it's him, Yo. Bogdanovich, and uh, he's gonna say Cordell superstars is back in Serbia. Uh, nah. I love his blind. Love. I actually, Brian, I, actually yeah, I had a hard time getting into that, that man. Not anything for you, Greg. That show it's not hot takes, blind, food. Opinion, I don't, I can't get into video games, same. TV, um, marriages, but, any hot takes. Maybe that's a hot take in and of itself. <laughs> but um, you know, I think I think I think that I think Daniel Jones can win comeback player of the year. I think it. I think is an opportunity for him to do it. I, I really do. I think there's a path. Um, I think the with the line being better, the the best he's ever had, um, with in neighbors being in, being there, and I'll give you two. I think neighbors could be an all pro as a rookie, man. I think the both those things could happen. I do. I think there's a world. There's a crazy world where that those two things happen. Um, I really believe that. Um, so those are gonna be my hot takes. That neighbors an all pro as a rookie, and that Daniel Jones wins. Comeback player of the year, which I don't think is as far. I, I think neighbors being an all pros probably more realistic, but comeback player of the year for Daniel Jones is not far fetched either. Those are hot wait, takes. Wait, I don't Greg, think the lukewarm and those are hot takes. Greg, you don't you don't hear that beeping in the background? The 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 alarm. You need to change the battery because I think the the carbon monoxide is getting to your head. Here know. you go. But but he just told me Aaron Rodgers going to win MVP this year. Okay. Yeah. The height the height of his his skills. MVP level. He could get a uh, comeback player of the year, too. I mean, he could rack up everything. This could be, he's riding out on the sunset like Clint, Clint Eastwood, so. I mean, he looked like, look like Clint, Clint Eastwood right now. All it has. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, my hot take to end off the show. Eli Manning, Hall of Fame case, is solely because he played in New York and he is a man. Outside of that, if we really break it down, his career, he's 117, you know, 117 in his career. That, that, that should point something out to you. Not one point in his career was he ever a top five quarterback ever in the career. He's never led in any of the major categories of passing yards, passing touchdowns, passing completions, never. But he's led in interceptions three times. 2007, 2010, and 2013, which also speaks to the point that, A, he led in interceptions the year that they won the Super Bowl. Now, the years that they won the Super Bowl, it's not popular to give the Super Bowl MVP to a defensive player. The whole team as a defense played really good, so they gave it to Eli. But Eli shouldn't have got it. Even the year that they had the, the amazing catch, the play before that, he threw the interception to end the game. They just dropped it. Eli Manning is, a lot better than is one of the Nathan, most overrated the same ways quarterbacks they're both Hall of Fame ever because one in NFL one history. Two, That's my hot take. I don't know if y'all have anything to say to that. Career, if not, we can end off the show. But them. that's my hot take, and I've been sitting there for a minute. The Patriots team it definitely holds a lot of weight. Um, <laughs> and some of those playoff runs where he had to go through the 49ers and the Patriots again, and some of those throws. Sure, granted, the stats are middle of the pack. Um, I think Philip Rivers has better stats than him. But would I take Philip Rivers over Eli Manning? Probably not. I mean, he's a winner. He won in New York. Winning in New York will get you so far in in life, in the Hall of Fame media. Um, That's my point. If he didn't play in New York, he doesn't have this Hall of Fame case. He played in New York, and his last name is Manning. That's what it is for me. I feel that's why he has a Hall of Fame case. Outside of the playoff, those two Super Bowl runs, he didn't. He didn't touch the. He didn't do anything. He didn't win in the playoffs. That outside of that, he did not win in the playoffs. In his 16-year career, he only has six postseason appearances. He played big, and I don't take away that he won those games. That's huge. But I think a part of why he gets that Hall of Fame not because I haven't heard anybody say that. It's on the Eli, fence. Eli might be the worst You know, what kind of – I've heard he's definitely a Hall of Fame player solidified. Me, I think a lot of that is the man wore a New York Eli Giants jersey. And, I won't make this and his last name is Manning. And long. you look at his dad. He his is dad a, a guaranteed Hall of Famer. Greatest I think quarterback the second Super Bowl. Run made him who made him that. I think the throw to Manning Hamill on the sideline was one of the greatest throws ever made by any quarterback <laughs> in the fact. history of the NFL. Period. I, and I don't think that's a, that's not a debate. It's like a, it's like a it's like in the Muse. It's like in the Louvre for the NFL. That's what they do. Um, he had elite arm talent. I because of the last few years of watching bad quarterback play, my perspective on Eli Manning's career changed so much because there's a time where I might have felt that way that Tom's talking about, but. I mean, re- in reality, in spite of his mistakes, when it mattered the most, he was the best, and he and he had he had elite arm talent. He was able to read a defense, understood what defenses were doing to him. He did he make mistakes, yes, but when the pressure rose, I don't. I mean, there were plenty of years where he led the NFL in cu- comebacks in the fourth quarter, lead wins in the fourth, uh, clutch wins in the fourth quarter, um, as well. So he, that was his brand, being clutch and being in New York. Of course, that helps you, but. You know, I, I think he had an elite, an, an elite arm um, for a lot of his career, and I think he really was able to kind of um, just master the, the game and understand what defenses are trying to do to him. And his pre his pre snap processing, post snap processing was at another level. I think that those those things are what make Eli Manning an All Hall of Famer. If we really want to get down to the nitty gritty, like what about your game makes you special? Those things are special. Post snap processing, pre snap processing, elite arm talent, and then when the game got tight and things got tight. San Francisco, um, I think that was I think that was eleven. San Francisco going over there, face full of dirt, you're getting hit all the time, still making the throws, still making the throws, still making the throws. 
Um, that's that's who he is. Didn't miss a game. Didn't miss a game. Guy was always playing. Guy played through a bunch of injuries. Played all the time. We were spoiled with Eli Manning as New York fans. We were. And, and yeah, I'm a Giants fan, so I might be a little biased. There's a lot of people who feel the way Tone feels. It's not, it's not a crazy thing to say. I just think that he definitely is a first ballot Hall of Famer. And I think he's going to end up getting a nod. I think we all know it's coming. I think, you know, I think we know it's coming. But I'll just say this. There's a lot of great quarterbacks all time. How many of them have two Super Bowls? <laughs> How many of them have gone to the playoffs and won two Super Bowls? We had two Super Bowl runs. Not many, man. Not many. And so you've got to take that into account when you're talking about Eli Manning reaching that mountaintop. Not once, but twice. That is that is special. And that's not something that Philip Rivers did. I don't think Ben Roethlisberger did it. I don't think he won twice. Did he win twice? And I always mix up on Ben Roethlisberger. He won one. I know for sure in Arizona. Did he ever win again? I don't think he did. Didn't win again. Yeah, didn't win another one. He, he he was literally better than all his contemporaries in that sense. I don't care about, like, the stats matter. It's your, your Hall of Fame case. They matter, of course. Um, but winning the Super Bowl twice and being a big part of the reason why your team pulled it off, especially in that second Super Bowl, more so than the second one. No, um, I think so. Listen, man. Yeah. Ben is, Ben is. They beat the Seahawks, I think. Was it the Seahawks they beat or whatever? Or wait, the AFC. They beat the Seahawks one year, I think it was. Seattle might have. I mean, you know yeah. I okay. No, the, the, they beat the Cardinals. And the Cardinals in that another year. The Cardinals, right? Oh, I'm capping. He, he, I'm capping. He's a two times right. champion. Okay, so bad. he's won twice. He's won twice. Yeah. Hall of Fame. Hall of Famer, by the way. Hall of Famer. Yeah. They beat. No, they beat That's Seattle. Right. Yeah, they That's beat right. Seattle one year. That's right. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Like, uh, Eli yeah, the Cardinals. Eli a, you beat the Cardinals two, three years player. later. He just was. I, I, I really believe that his ability to make a mistake and flush that mistake down the toilet and lead your different, your different in that regard. That's, that's though. really special. Eli Manning that's got really Super Bowl MVPs. Those long, years, man. it was so, Hines uh, Ward and you know, San Antonio Holmes. Those two rings injury. make you immortal when you do it in New York. But I think there's a lot of traits that he had that are, were elite Hall of Fame level traits, and I've kind of gone over them, so I won't repeat it. But yeah, man, I, I, I get it. I get it. I don't think it's an unfair thing to say, but. Yeah, I mean, look, Aaron Rodgers got one. As talented as Aaron Rodgers is, he got one Super Bowl. He, he uh, can't get over the hump again. Sure, but I just don't think because his teammates because teammates hate a, him. Eli Manning isn't a first ballot Hall of Famer to me. Like he's a good quarterback. But is he? But is he going to get in Hall for it? Do you think he's going to get in on the first try here? He's getting in. He's getting in. I'm not. I'm not debating that okay. he's a Hall of Fame okay. quarterback. I'm debating like no, he's getting in on the first ballot. try. He's getting in the first ballot. Huh? He's getting in on first ballot. Like he's up for it this year. He's getting in. He's gonna get. He's gonna be put in all face. I don't think he gets okay. in first ballot. Okay, I do. I, I do. It, you, it, it, to do it twice in New York City is crazy. And in those playoff runs, he was elite. I mean, he played like over his head. It, that's what made him special. It was like the guy. He, he, Tone's right. He was. He wasn't elite during the regular season. And it, but when when it was close, when the games got close, and then big games, he became a different player. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. So. Just saying, just saying, he's getting in the first ballot. I'm just telling you, because right. when you perform when it matters the most, it's all that people remember. We only remember what he did well. We don't remember the, the interceptions. I don't care. Oh, I don't I remember them. Giants fans look past it a little bit, but nah. everybody he, else, he, who, people, everybody else who watched football knows the the stuff that he was doing on the field, throwing picks. He's got pick. two bowls, man. Yeah, two. Yeah, you can keep, you can keep uh, trying to force that. And because of him, because of him. Because they, they don't get there, good. They don't get there. Not if it weren't for him. The the, the line, the line was incredible, but it's because of him. Like it's because of him. Because he made all the necessary throws. He did. Without him, we don't win them. It's not. It doesn't happen. See, sure, and, and no, also, sure. But also, you guys had Hall of Fame defenses too. So if we're I, gonna I go that, that route. I mean, he nah. didn't. He wasn't lightening up. Like he wasn't. You're not winning a game three to zero. All the way through. Yeah. Okay. When they, they beat won the, the game, like beat 14, down the Falcons 10, in the 17, divisional 14. round. It wasn't like nah, some, look, some nah. high they beat, game. They, they beat down. They they beat down the Falcons in the divisional round. Put up like hung like thirty or thirty on their heads. Whatever it was, the, the Packers they out they out gunned them in the frozen tundra. Happened twice. Happened twice. By the way, Eli led those the, the team to those wins. Man. Eli deserves the credit he that he gets from New York fans. And I think there's a general respect in the football world for Eli Manning. I, I, you know what I mean? Also, look, there's this too. Miles talking from a place of, of, uh, of bitterness, right? I mean, being a Jets fan, watching the Giants go win. Two oh, really that couldn't care. have been easy. Like, Eli that Manning couldn't have been is, easy. It is what it is. He's, like Tone said, 
if his name was Eli Apple, we wouldn't be saying he's going into Hall of Fame. He if, if his name was he, Eli Apple, the if his name was Eli Apple, Apple the the uh, marketing and the and the the uh, the marketing and the branding would be brilliant for him. Being in the Big Apple, being Eli name Eli Apple, being good. If Eli yeah. Apple, if Eli Apple bum ass was actually good in New York, he would have had a great career. Now wouldn't he? He would have had, the 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 amount of money he would have made here with that name. Companies getting behind him, but he sucked, and he, he looks like a, 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 a like a dude from Blood Diamond. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't say that. I did not say that. <laughs> oh. I agree with Greg on this part. He had a Hall of Fame mental toughness, and he had a Hall of Fame daddy to speak on his behalf. That was probably the best thing. <laughs> you didn't say that part. I'm saying that his daddy saved his career by forcing that trade. If he was with the San Diego Chargers, and we saw what happened with those San Diego Chargers teams, we Eli Manny forget it. Eli Manning isn't sniffing the Hall of Fame. I agree he's going to get in. Well, yeah. But I think a heavy part of it is when you win in New York, because he won two Super Bowls, those other four playoff, playoff trips was absolutely disgusting from him. But he won two. And well, two yeah. in New York against those Patriot teams count as like four rings. So I completely and there'll be a, and there'll be an argument I, I completely that he isn't, it, but it was that he isn't in New in New York. York. Same thing. You win in New York, York. Well, it'll be the same thing. Try to rope Jalen into it. They will. They gonna write. They gonna the write you behind Eli into was never into one of the whole thing. Jalen Brunson wins in New York because because they're gonna say Jalen Brunson. Forget it. He might be first ballot if he wins a ring in New York. Point guard in basketball. They're gonna say they're gonna start throwing things on his name. That's just what people do. But when it mattered, but when but when it mattered, you were number one though. When it mattered, when the game was in the line, you were number one. You, and you know from playing sports, these, when the game is on the line, the heart, the the heartbeat starts racing a little harder. The ball starts to feel a little slippery. You don't, you, you don't. That's he was the best in that moment, and that makes him a first ballot Hall of Famer because most guys are not. They don't handle it well. Look at Dak Prescott fumbling ass in the in the big moment. Look at Tony Rowe in a big moment. Look at look at look at Aaron Rodgers one Super Bowl with all the talent that God could ever give a human being. He has all the talent God could ever give a human being. He has one Super Bowl. This guy won twice. In this market, he's the first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't think it's a debate. I don't think it's a debate. I don't. But I understand if people want to debate it, that's fine. But like you say, debate your mom. All right, that's what you always tell me. Tony Romo. I was about to say Tony Romo. Yeah, that's Yeah, I know the vibes. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Bench model, y'all. Peace.